675,000 people. Yes, you did hear me right. Uh, that is the number of people that are still waiting for their asylum claims to be processed. Just to give you some context, that is an increase of 44% on last year. Uh, I've got to say, Connor, I think this is an absolute joke. I think this is all out of control. I've said multiple times now uh, that this government have lost control. No one even has any answers as to what to do. So I'm hoping that you might have some. How do you fix this? Uh, if they want to hire a lot of people to help process the claims, I'll take £10 an hour to write no on every single one of them. I, I, I think lots of British people now who are hardworking, who can see the amount of their areas that have been filled with hotels full of people who ditch their documents, who get lost in the asylum system based on spurious claims, are just sick of it. We, we don't want to be spending £8 million a day in, in taxpayer cash that could go elsewhere or back in our own pockets on people who come from non-war-torn areas. Plenty of people are, are exploiting the asylum system and the human traffickers that will take them over the channel just so they can sit in a hotel and, and smoke on, on my money. So I, I think, generally speaking, we need to find out the home nations that these people came from, sanction those home nations if they keep letting their but people hang on, escape. Hang good luck with that, because a lot of these people took their documents in the channel, so you don't even know where they come well, from. Well, we know quite a few. So we know, for example, Albania had a massive influx from last year. We also know that there are quite a lot of um, North African men who are using social media accounts to uh, invite others to, to the UK. Um, so, and that's, that's something that I've reported on, uh, in, on, on my outlet as well. So we know quite a few of these places these, these people are coming from, and they're not war-torn, and they don't have legitimate asylum claims like people from Afghanistan who are interpreting on behalf of the British Army. So just turn them around, send them home, because you've got no more entitlement to be here than, than anyone else. Well, yeah, but the only way you ascertain entitlement is to process them, and this is the flaw in the plan. Um, what's your... Do you have any solutions? Well, I'm afraid... Connor, it's, it's, like, it's, it's very nice that you've got this like, view that you'll be paid £10 an hour to go no, but that's not going to help, because that's not processing an application, that's just saying no. The point is we need to process the application. They do... I, I think it's got to the point where they need to create a sort of task force to deal with this backlog, literally like they did with the vaccine task force, where they need to get a sort of outside of the civil service, bring in specialists who are going to look at the system and go, how the hell are we going to get rid of this backlog? Because the reason why it is costing the state so much money is because, yes, these asylum seekers, are, whether they are genuine like the Afghans, which I would like to point out were the second highest number coming to this country, 10,000 of them. So let's not all just dismiss them as people trying to jump into the country. But they're not all, they're um, not all our interpreters. They didn't all not, work with us. There's lots we, of people that are just coming from Afghanistan because it fell to the Taliban because it's not a good country. Well, that's understandable, but they're, no, it, they're, it is because if they're allowed to claim refugee status, if they're being tortured for whatever reason, because a lot of people did help the Americans and the British mm. over there, the point being, it doesn't matter what you think, why they're mm. here, there is a process that's meant to deal with it. It's, called, it's our asylum system. It's the system of processing them that has completely broken down and they are languishing in hotels for years on the taxpayers' bill, which is causing huge unrest, huge unhappiness, especially when some of these hotels are being used because they're cheap in some of the poorest parts of this country. I do understand why people are getting upset. They're like, well, you're not dumping them in the middle of Chelsea, are you? Mm. So I do, I, I understand people's frustration, but it is the system of processing them which is holding everything up. I also think that our law system, the court system, has got increasingly complex because you can set a law, but then with each case that maybe finds holes in it, that law then becomes more complex. I'm sorry, it's actually a very complex system. I'm trying to describe it in the most sort of layman terms. Yeah, but people terms, are cheating the system as well. Which is, of course they are, but that is why the system needs to be more robust to find those cheating, to check it. And unfortunately, there's a lot of people talking about how we need to leave the ECHR. I don't think it's, it's because the very way that we deal with law in this country is that every time a case breaks the initial law, that law then becomes more complex and there are more adjuncts to that original law. So it's almost as our system has developed, it has become far more complex, which is why you're getting, like, the aeroplanes not taking off to go to Rwanda because it's being held up in the courts for perfectly legitimate reasons. But, yes, some of them are playing the system. I'm not, I'm not denying that. But, but, but the, this, the reason is, this is not that. I'm sorry, 175,000, that is a... They, I, from what I know, they don't even have enough staff to staff it. Well, but the, yeah, but I would, I would anyone have enough staff? If you've got... 100, if you've got what, well, because there's a lot of training that's got to take place. The job is actually quite complex.
It, but it seems to be deliberately complicated because, let's put it this way, even if we left the ECHR, we turn around and join the 1951 UN Refugee Convention that says you're a refugee if you're unable or unwilling to return to your country. So it's just as subjective. So they don't want to fix this problem. They don't want to fix it because all government spending and all the people they can cram into the hotels count on the GDP sheet, so it makes the numbers look slightly better. And they don't want to fix it on the other side because they know that if, if they incorporate these people into safe and legal routes, because they're financially dependent on the government, they'll have a dependent voter base. So it, the reason it's increasingly complicated and it's never fixed is because there are perverse incentives for the government not to solve it, while people who have these hotels built in their area are saying, we, the, the world on our doorstep is changing, can you fix this for us? So you actually think that they're deliberately allowing this to get so bad? Yes, and also the reason is, is because what do you always hear in the five promises? We're going to stop the small boats. Great, please stop the small boats. What about the million plus visas you gave last year? What about the net million migration that we're expecting? What about the 15 to 18 new cities the size of Birmingham we're going to have to build by 2046 to deal with the amount of people coming into the country? It's a distraction technique. Distraction technique, is it? Do you agree? Well, in fact, who do you agree with? Different opinions on here. Get in touch and let me know.